uh, March 19, 2014. I want you, I want you, everyone to do this sample so we know what the process is. And then after we do the sample, I want you to use, uh, which we'll use this template for. We're going to draw here. We're going to draw your design here. Um, actually, we're going to draw this little guy, right, which is the example that we're going to try. We're going to draw it here, and then here we're going to solve the inside. And we're just going to do it just right now. I mean, basically, we just need to replicate here uh, the little sample here, okay? Um, and this just shows the process, this first sheet. So the first sheet is just describing what's going on. Um, and what's going on is that normally um, whatever the design would be, right? So let's say that's the center of the cube. I need to figure out, you know, from here, this is, let's say that's A and this is D, I think. Yeah, and this is Z. So normally, if I have that information and I get that information from the other pieces, let's see, let, let's just take as an example this one, from B to D, okay, right here. So I would take my ruler, uh, but I would measure that, and I would take my compass, it starts from scratch. So I would, somewhere I would draw a line, right? I would take my compass and I would measure this, right? B to D, like this. Maybe I mark my first spot like that. And I would find the second spot, right? So that's now, let's just call that B and D. And now I would just look for the information going to the middle of the cube somewhere in my other handouts. Normally what you would do to find those distances is you would cut these sections, right? And so this is for a plane that's cutting through the middle uh, parallel, and this is through the edges, okay, through the diagonal. Um, the 3D version of that, if you remember, is this, right? So if I want to know how far any point on this line to the middle is, I can just cut it and then draw on that. And I do the same here. Any point that is, that is on this edge, I can cut the cube this way and then I can draw on it. So it's a cross section that gives me true dimensions. So we have that information, we have that kit of parts because I did the legwork. So now if I want to know from B and from D, how far that is from the center, I would just look in my handouts. So I'd say, oh, B is here. Okay, so let me take that. Um, I'm going through all of these because you'll see how much time we're going to save with the other system. So from B to Z, and I would draw here from B, a big arc because I'm not really sure where it's going to be exactly, right? Um, and then the other one is D. So D happens to be in this particular handout. So I take D, and you, you test it by you know, going in like that and then making sure that it is actually correct. Little, little problems, little inaccuracies will, you know, will blow up and will get bigger as you, as you move. Okay, so that's D, and now where it crosses, Now I find my first Z, okay? So that would be the beginning of the process. And I would finish it off by, um, by drawing my triangle, okay? And then I would just repeat the process. Now in this case, I would be going backwards, right? Because I, uh, just, what I did is I did this part first instead of this part. So now I would be going this way and my, my fan, like would look maybe something like this. So essentially, you got triangles. The bases of the triangles are on the face of the cube. The other two arms of the triangle are inside the cube, and all that information is in some of those handouts, and you're just putting it together, and just put it together in a step. However, that was before this student said, well, you know, I figured if I draw these circles completely, right? It's actually easier, and lo and behold, it was much easier. So we came up, he came up with this, and I said, well, I gotta use that because it's excellent. So here instead, what we have is all those distances that are like given as a kid apart in all these sections, 
right, are basically summarized in one big flat plane in this grid. So from Z, these are all the different distances. A, B, X is the dot that I thought we shouldn't use. But now, because it's here, you can actually use it if you want. C, D, and E, okay? And what it is, it's all these distances. Um, if I have a cube and I have a center, right? And I have all these lines that go, these are like a bunch of radiuses, right? And so you can imagine that you have many, um, many circles, you know, where the edges of those circles are these guys, right? So what it is, it's these things are now all flat. So we're going to try to do that now, and I want you to do it. I want you to do it with me of the, the given example, okay? Because, again, that's exactly the steps that we're going to do to do yours. And I know there's not much time, but I really would like for you to do it today so you can go home and have your design pretty much solved, and you can start building your rough cube, okay? Um, so the first thing to do is to draw, because this is only at half scale, uh, this example here, to draw that example at full scale on the right side, okay? So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, if you need to sharpen your mechanical pencil with, well, you should have that gadget because it should be in the kit. Um, okay, everybody, everybody on board? Okay? I'm going to be really naggy today. N naggy? Nagging? Is naggy a word? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, we're going to do the example first because it's, you know, it is a little bit of a process and we need to go through it because then um, uh, what, what the aim is to construct something like this, okay, today. Okay, look, at, look up for a second. So the aim is to build um, a test model that's going to test whether once I cut all my parts, my face, okay, and the insides, and I put it together, it's going to actually meet the center and it's going to be straight. In other words, if I look at it from the side, this face is straight and not pitching in or pulling out. And even though it's rough, it's actually going to give you a good sense of what... I mean, I know this is going to work because I've tested it, but <laughs> yours may not, right? So, um, so I literally want you guys, after we do it, to build it and then build the same for your design which we'll pick today, and then we'll make these little triangles for. Okay, so it's a lot, but it can be done. Um, so we're going to redraw. Um, now, you have, you have a clean grid in the big template, and you have a clean grid in the small handout. So it's up to you later on. We're going to do the test here. Later on, you can use your design on this one instead, okay? Or reuse that if you're, if you're clean enough. But for now, let's just draw the... Uh, uh, the test one here, and this is your um, this is your master for the face of the cube in terms of picking up where the letters are, which letters are which, which corners are which. Uh, do not redraw lines that are already horizontal or vertical. Okay, that's just going to mess up the layout, the drawing here. So I'm not going to redraw from C to B because I already have it. Okay, so I'm just going to redraw from B to B right here. Okay, and try to be really precise. No 6B pencils for this drawing, okay, please. Um, can you actually see it? Yeah. So now my other line is here. I mean, you could fade the line a little bit out, crossing it to see if it's really crossing exactly, but, um, but it's not necessary. Okay, so now it's hard to see what that design is, but you have this as a reference, so I gather you should be able to visualize it without, without thickening the lines, because as soon as you thicken the lines, you know, you're going you're gonna to make a mess, okay? So I'm, I am going to write the letters, and I'm going to do it very uh, rough, like... 
carpenter style like, okay, not like graphic designer shishi like, okay, but like carpenter like, big letters, okay. Um, those are the ones that I'm gonna need. Well, I'm a graphic designer too. I have a master's degree in graphic design, but you know, um, even though I did the film for it, which was pretty amazing that I got away with that. But um, okay. So now that we have this pattern big here, everybody, I want you to do it, okay? I'm looking like, you guys did it, everybody? Yes? Okay, I can't go around now to check, but. So what we'll do now is we trans, we, we build our inside. Okay, and if you, um, if you want to double check again that your, um, your rulers are good and everything is like perfectly. Um, see, I love it when machines actually do what they claim to do because oftentimes they don't, right? That's why you should know how to use a scale because even though you scale something and you send it to the printer and the printer prints it even though it's 3D um, and then you say, well, the computer has set it up. Well, you need to double check and the way to double check is you take a physical ruler, right? And if you trust your ruler, then you can, you know, double check. So, so AZ is two inches. Okay, that's better, right? I mean, we're talking, you know, probably like 250th of an inch here, so that's good. Um, so you should double check your rulers against my rulers to make sure that they're correct. Um, because imagine I gave you, you know, 27 wrong templates, right? You start drawing it, and then you build your cube using your own ruler, and the two rulers don't match, you know, forget it, right? Disaster. And that can be really, really frustrating. Um, when I checked the printout in the office with the paper cutter, it was off by like a 30 seconds of an inch, which was a lot, uh, the paper cutter ruler. Okay, so here we go. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna move in this fashion from left to right, okay? This way. All right, so take the compass and plot C to B. It's one inch, we know that, right? But we're not, we can't use a ruler, we have to use the compass. Okay, so measure that, C to B, and then I'm gonna draw it on top because I'm gonna save, I'm gonna save the bottom part for your own design, okay? So the point now is that these points are given by the circles. So I'm gonna point somewhere on C, it doesn't matter where, somewhere on my C circle, okay? And I'm actually gonna draw a nice big circle, and that's more for show than anything else, but And what I'll do now is actually I'll draw a little, I lost it now, now it's too small. Wait a minute, where are you? There. So that, now don't draw on the crossing. Draw around it if you need to see it, but don't mess up that crossing, okay? So that's my C, and B is gonna be whatever that circle touches the other big circle B, okay? So it's gonna be here, see that's my B. So that's my first segment, damn. Yes, sorry. Okay, so I took whatever I measured off of my layout and I just put it anywhere, it doesn't matter where, and I drew a circle where that circle intersects my B. That's my first line, okay? And I'm gonna actually draw it now. Okay, so go ahead and draw that. Okay, so let's zoom out now again. Okay, so you see what I did. I just basically transferred this dimension right here onto this grid. Now I'm gonna do the next. Now the next is gonna be from B to B and that's square root of two because it's the diagonal. The next one is gonna be a bigger one, but it doesn't matter, right? This distance is gonna be bigger because it's two squares. It's just the way the configuration works. So let's measure the next one, which is from B to B diagonally. 
And by the way, B, A, B, and C are lever. They're just, you know, they're arbitrary. I just, I just picked them, but they could be some, some other letters. Okay, so that's my next line. So the advantage of this system is that basically all the distances going to the middle of the cube are already set for you. So what you're doing is you're really just drawing the outside. Um, so now with that new one, I pick it up from B. And because it's going from B to B, it will be the intersection of this circle on that same big circle, right? In other words, the two spots are both on my B circle, my big, big circle. <laughs> Sorry, B, big, whatever. <laughs> I'm getting confused. Okay. Um, okay, so the next spot is going to be here, along B, right? Is that, that makes sense? And I'm going to do these spots now, but please don't do them on your layout. Keep it clean. I mean, if you do, do them really, really tiny. Um, oh, I could have also finished the first triangle earlier, right? So let's do that as well. You guys okay? You doing okay? Okay, so I just, I just finished my first triangle. And now I'm doing the second one, which was, again, this is my B circle. So when I picked up my information, I measured with the compass from this point B to this other point B. I had my first one already, so I drew a big circle with that dimension. And where it falls again on the same circle, that's my second spot. So I'm going to draw that again now. Okay, so the, the, the difference really is that in the other system, you wouldn't have these circles already drawn for you. Um, all right, so now I'm going to do my third one, which is from B to B, but going up and down, which is going to be two inches, right? Uh, by the way, when you're holding the compass, the best thing is to use two hands, use the other hand to kind of get it really in the right spot. And then when you're holding the compass, don't hold it by the arms, hold it by the, oops, I need some padding underneath. Um, hold it by the little tip, okay, at the top. Otherwise your, your hand is, may, you know, may make it different. Okay, so I take that dimension, B to B now, and again, it's going to be on that same circle, except it's going to be different, it's going to be bigger, right? So I point on B, and I do one more circle. Can you still see it? Is it visible? Okay, uh, so that spot now is again on B, which is here. And I can do my third triangle. Um, we're doing this sort of from me here and you guys there, but when we do the uh, your own, I'm going to come around and help you, okay? So don't despair if... <laughs> okay, so three, one more, and then we're done, and then we're going to cut it. So the last one is going to be the biggest. It's going from B to D. Um, is this a file, this template online? This template is online, but unless you're absolutely sure that you can print it exactly at 100%, yeah. don't do it. Just grab one from me, okay? So from B to D, go back to my circle, take my last point, and one other big circle. And now let's find it. So D is the next to last circle, so it's almost the biggest circle. Right there. Oops. Okay, so that is going to give us now the 
the final design. Um, and because we have now done one face of the cube, that is going to be useful for everything else, including the other faces and including the upper part. In other words, this same layout, this same design is going to be used for the other half of the module, even though it might not be an exact half in terms of area. Okay? So that's the finished template. So I don't know if it's going to be right. I mean, I know now because I've done it, but, but if I was doing a new one, you know, I would have to double check. So now what we need to do is cut these parts to make the model, to test it. And what we'll do is we'll cut, we'll cut one square for the bottom, we'll cut one section for the, um, for the face of the cube, and we're, not, we're just not going to use this part for now. And we're going to cut two smaller squares to create this uh, center, okay? We need something that's going to tell you where the center is, okay? So I just build it up. So grab use a nice piece of paper, okay, that's pretty stiff and nice and clean, white preferably. And I'm going to make myself a copy of this because if I use this, I know for sure the paper is thin. You know, when I use a push pin or something else, it's going to get all messed up, right? So make sure you have something underneath. And let's do that, okay? And I'll do it pretty much in the middle of this white piece of paper, okay? So take a piece of paper that's white put your template there and then poke it with your push pin or maybe your compass okay so all the points with the letters just go loop loop plop plop I don't know I don't know what it sounds like I'm sure it makes some sound but um, okay pop, 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 pop. and now when I look at it it's like crap where the hell is it okay so the first thing you want to do after you do that is actually highlight them somehow and I don't care how you do it, I just draw some circles around it, okay? Again, I don't care what system you use as long as it is, um, as long as you have it, okay? I'm just replicating this so that I have a better system, okay? A more durable system. Um, so this push pin system I learned from my teacher too, which is a great system. From Scarpa, yeah. Okay, now once I do this, I'm not gonna cut this, okay? This is gonna be my you know my my cast essentially, my my original, okay? And I'm gonna write the letters on this guy too um, because I definitely need to keep track of what I'm doing, okay? So once I do that drawing, immediately I'm going to mark it and I'm going to say that's D, that's B, uh, oops, not here, here, B, D, that's Z, B, B, and C. And I'm going to, I joked this morning that you're going to write master here and you're going to put your name on top, but because I'm the teacher, I'm going to put my name underneath. Okay? All right. So, yeah. So now, that's yours. Nobody can mess with it. Don't lose it because your entire month is going to depend from this, okay? <laughs> um, so that's one piece, and that's great. And now, um, you can probably, I'm not going to do it, guys, but you can probably do the same thing with this square. Can you pay attention for a moment? You should probably do, well, actually, you know what? I'm going to do it. Um, So let, let's make a quick, because that's one way you can make all your parts. Um, and it might be the best way after all, because this drawing is perfect, right? I did do it on the computer, 
And if you can trust the drawing, then you know all your pieces made from this drawing are going to be correct if you cut them correct. Whereas if you, you actually draw them, um, there might be some variation. So again, I don't know what everything is. I'm going to... Yes? Mm -hmm. You know, the one disadvantage of doing this way is that you're going to have to do every piece separately um, rather than like, you know, in a set, right? Remember I said if you do 16 by 4, the advantage is that these are going to be folds and you're not going to need to cut. So the disadvantage is that you would be making, for the rough it's fine, but for the final you would be making each piece individually, right? Going around four times. So the disadvantage is you got four pieces instead of one big piece. Okay? The advantage is that you know this grid is correct. And so you don't have to like reinvent it. Um, there was something else, and I forget what was the other. Um, oh, once I do my first one, the way I do it, if I wanted to do it in a row, I would try to match this. And the way I do it is what I call flipbook um, animation thing, to make sure it's perfectly on there. Have you ever used this system? So if I can make it perfectly match, if I can't see it, maybe I have a light table and I can see it, but once I get it perfect there, then I do the next one. But you have to really make sure that you're aligning it, right? Um, anyway, you know, drawing a 16 by four is not that hard, but it should be correct. So whichever way, but right now I'm gonna do it because I really don't wanna mess too much with this. So let's, let's do one more here. Um, it's more granular to do it this way. Uh, there is less room for error in measuring and cutting. Uh, it's more challenging to put it together because you have more joints as opposed to just scores that you can do, right? Um, the other disadvantage of doing it this way is that now this line, for example, can you look up for a second? This line that I just filled there, well, I just took two points, but it's really, well, because I did it freehand, it's probably going to be something like this or something like that. If I wanted to really do it right, I would take my triangles and make sure, you know, that everything is being uh, drawn straight, right? I would have another edge and I would come down exactly right. So that's the other disadvantage. It's a little bit of a false uh, sense of, um, you know, precision. Uh, that might be screwed up because, you know, you're not using two tools, right? So I would say any combination of things that works is going to be, going to be good. Okay, and again, I'm going to, I'm going to again mark this. Uh, see, and I'm going to be inside now because uh, on both sides of the two halves. Okay, so that's another master if you're going to go that way. Because there's a lot of parts and a lot of like flipping and flopping and left and right and right hand and left hand thing, you've got to keep track of your thing. So my way of keeping track is I mark everything and I say, okay, I know this is my best uh, original. Let's make one now. Let's just make this, okay? So do you have your tools? You have to have the cutting mat or something to cut on and you have to have uh, some of these boards, okay? So let's do it, guys. Just poke it. So you guys understood what I did. I basically made a second generation master for use because it's thicker and it's more durable. This thing is not durable, even though it's very precise. But once you go through these 10 times, it's gonna get screwed up and your push pin is gonna make a giant hole, right? In each point. So I made myself, even though it's second generation, one that I know it's good enough to do all my other pieces from. So now I just drew again once more and because this is the master, I'm not going to cut the master. Do not cut your master, right? So if you have your design, uh, what is the other one? 
This is the one that you're not going to cut. This is the one you're going to keep for all your production, okay? And this, if you want to use this. <laughs>